So welcome to this video on the Duranalog Select 2 Dual CV Processor. Dranalog say this is a Swiss army knife for your modular system and I couldn't agree more. If you remember the Compare 2 dual window comparator from Dranalog and the video I did, it's deceptive of how something seemingly simple and utilitarian can be sexy and exciting and wide ranging in its potential uses for audio and CV and Select 2 is very much the same. It's 6 HP and we've got some highly accurate gate controlled voltage processors that you can create voltage, switch, mute, hold, invert and attenuate, offset, add and mix and subtract voltages from slow CVs all the way up to audio frequencies. We have two inputs per channel. So this is section A and channel B, a left and a right input. The left input is a voltage that we can attenuate this is a bipolar offset from negative five to plus five off in the middle. This is also the attenuverter for this input. We have a hold, so we can gate and freeze and hold. A bit like sample and hold in a way, but it will pass through when it's not holding. We can select, so gate between the two channels. We can plug a gate or any kind of logic style input. You can put LFOs and fluctuating voltages into this, but it's like an on and off logic in, it's either on or off. Unity input, which will turn off this control, allowing us to take attenuated or attenuverted signals or signals that have even been muted down and turn them on and off. It's great for muting. We could do some creative ring mod type effects as well. The output itself will mix down to channel B if we're not using it again and we can add offsets and exactly the same thing there so let's get into a range of patches and see what this can do okay so in this patch we're going to look at a gated CV generator and we're going to use this to transpose a sequence now let me show you what's going on in the background first I wanted to make this a bit more musically dense and interesting so make sure you listen stereo here's two sounds And fairly hard left and right and these are just being triggered externally from another sequence nothing to do with select 2 itself this is the main sequence that we're currently listening to and we'll be adding transposition to and that sequence is going straight into data I'm just using data for some really basic visualization Now what we're going to do to this sequence is use the select input on select two to move between this offset that I'm creating because we've got voltage on the first input by default and nothing, so effectively no transposition. Now without a signal patched in, there's a high voltage in the select input already and it's gonna just create this blue trace which is the offset voltage I mix in before I hit my quantizer. But by putting a signal in, I can use a manual gate to change when this will transpose. So let's do some transposition. Now I can take this one stage further and I'm gonna add in a little bit of delay, just because it sounds nice and come out of the second output, the second channel. Now again, by default, this is creating its own offset. But I'm gonna patch in the first channel into the second input right there. And by using the select input on channel two, I can select the left-hand input. You can think of that as input A, which I'm gonna do now by putting in a voltage. Or I can select the second input, but I can also transpose 
this input because it's a top channel. So I have default position, no voltage coming out of select two at all. The top voltage coming through. And that's just going into this input. So it's either nothing from the top or this. Or I can transpose from the top channel over to this voltage. So it makes for a nice little two-way transposition tool. Let's bring in my background sounds. I'm just going to transpose away for a minute before we move on to the next patch. So here's an expansion on the previous patch where we used a gate into the select input in order to move over to the onboard CV generation and effectively nothing on the second input. So it was almost like we were gating the CV offset that we were creating and we were using this to transpose the sequence. Now here we do have an input into the first channel on the top and bottom A and B channels. These are coming out and being panned slightly and these are audio inputs. So if I let the first channel through, which I could just remove the select input to do, you can hear that that's a clap sound. But with the select input, and I have a high voltage going in, it's this voltage on data. When I pull this down, it's moving over to that input. So this is like a voltage controlled mute for the audio. The second input, which again, I could just pull the signal. This is a hi-hat pattern. And again, bring down the voltage. But these works as mutes and level controls. Now with that clap playing, we can still volume control or invert. But the cool thing here is that we can use varying voltages into the select. It doesn't have to be this manual gating that I've been doing in the last patch and this one. So if I set this to be a sequence, this is muting the clap, this is muting the bottom channel. So it can be a little bit more creative. So as a really simple extension to this patch, instead of having nothing in the second inputs, which is why we were muting, because we were selecting between this left hand input and the right one, which was nothing, so it worked as a mute. By placing sounds in there, we can use CV and gate signals to switch. So here's the sounds I had before. This is a trace for the top channel. Now with a high voltage, we move to this input. Lower voltage, back to the other. Now the second channel, instead of having nothing again to mute this hi-hat, is now a rim shot. And again, to be a bit more creative and unique, if we send sequences in, we were sequencing the muting before, which was great. We're going to sequence the switching between clap and snare. And hi-hat and rim shot. So for this patch, we're going to create ring modulation and other ring modulation-like effects. When we do this by taking our input, in this case I'm using a triangle, that's the green trace at the top of the Mordax data, that's going into the input. And I've turned this down so it's fully inverted. I'm then taking a square signal, which is a blue trace on the Mordax data, into the unity input. And this is like an on-off for the polarizer, the attenuverter. This signal, if I take this out, would just be off in the middle. I could turn it up to the right 
or invert it, because it's inverted against its input, to the left. But by using an audio rate square, which is a blue trace again, we can turn this on and off. And doing this at audio rates gives us ring modulation effects. So let's play around with the rate of the modulator at the unity input. change it from a square to a ramp. Notice how it's changing how this audio signal is kind of being turned on and off in terms of its inversion. With this in tune, let's go up an octave with a modulator. Select 2 looks like such a simple utility, but there's great tones in there. So for this patch, I'm making use of the mixing facility and using both channels. I have a modulation signal coming into the top channel. Its output has been mixed with the bottom channel. So what this means is that, if I just cancel these out, I can attenuate my signal up top. And it's an LFO and a sequence. So you can kind of see the LFO on the trace on data and the step sequence. You can invert it. As now I might like the inverted sequence and the advantage of having the second channel is I can then use the bipolar offset function, the default signal that's coming in. So say I like the inverted version, add a little offset, raise the whole thing up. This was open fully, not inverted. It might be too high. You can hear it's opening my filter and distortion too much. So add some negative offset. And pull that back down. It's great for controlling and taming signals. Bipolar offset that mixes with the attenuated version up top. Now to finish on, let's add some other functions. And I'm going to add a signal to switch over to the right hand input on B. And I'm going to put a signal in as well. So I've still attenuated my modulation and offset it. an LFO that I'm re-triggering. Stop that looping, so it's an envelope. So it's a great way of mangling, splicing and mixing modulation signals. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, comment. It'd be great to chat in the comments if you've got any questions. Check out my Compare 2 video, the Dual Window Comparator from Duranalog, which is very much like Select 2. It's deceiving. It looks really simple, but the potential range of patches and the quality of the module is great. There's just a ton of stuff in there that you can do. I kind of looked at Compare 2 when it came out and thought, okay, I get a gist of what this does. I wasn't too excited initially. I felt like I kind of knew everything it did until I played with it and Select 2 is very much the same. Support me on Patreon if you'd like early access to content and access to exclusive content just for my Patreon supporters. Cheers for watching.